Look at verse number 14 in Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible re reads, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. God knows everything about what we go through in this world. He's not a distant God that doesn't understand our sufferings, doesn't understand our pain, doesn't understand our sorrow, doesn't understand grief. He understands it fully, completely, through Jesus Christ, who actually lived a human existence in this life. I mean, I, I already believe that God already has the knowledge and would know what it's like, but it's like he even proves it through Jesus Christ being born and going through everything that he went through and experiencing every single thing for himself on what we go through. And talk about someone who's had people against him and someone who's experienced a lot of grief and sorrow and physical pain and discomfort and hunger and thirst and everything else. And he went through all of it yet without sin. Look at verse number 16, though. I, I love this. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We can boldly go to the throne. We can boldly go to Jesus with your problems, with your grief, with your source of, of, of sorrow and, and boldly come and find grace to help in time of need. Because he understands, he knows, and he's not going to just leave you high and dry. Don't run away from God. Don't turn from God. Don't charge God foolishly. Go to God. Seek God for his help. Seek God for his grace. He knows what you're going through, and he can help. That is where you need to turn. Yeah, it's great to have friends, and, and I encourage that. And I think friends should be friends and help people in their time of need and grief. But you know what? You can do it without anyone, ultimately, with God. Amen. Jesus was a man of sorrows. Turn, if you would, to um, turn, if you would, to Proverbs twenty-three. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, which is a very prophetic passage about Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, verse 3, says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. You're talking about some sorrow and grief. Jesus Christ went through a lot of sorrow and grief. While he was God in the flesh, you know what? He still was a man. And when people despise you and reject you, that's not like, hey, that makes me real happy that everybody hates me and is against me and wants to kill me when all I'm trying to do is good. That's going to be a source of sorrow and grief. And people just, they're hiding their faces from them like, oh man, I don't even want to look on him. To be that much of an outcast? And on top of that, verse 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs. He bears our griefs. He's taken it on his shoulders. The weight that we carry can be put on Jesus Christ. He bears our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He's done that for us, and people still despise him. That is sorrow upon sorrow. He knows what it's like. But we see here, you know what? He did bear our griefs for us. And he carried our sorrows. 